Welcome back to Aragon Academy. For the past few episodes, we've been talking about scope mounts. Today, we'll conclude our discussion on barrel droop. Then we'll go over how to use the pellet's trajectory to sight in a scope. We learned that a scoped gun starts shooting irregularly when the scope's vertical elevation is raised to the point where the erector tube's return spring relaxes. That's because the spring is supposed to firmly hold the erector tube in place against recoil and vibration when the air gun fires. But when it's relaxed, it can't do that. So, the erector tube is free to jump around, causing the scope to randomly shift its zero. I'll give you a handy way to quickly diagnose that problem in the field. The way to diagnose a drooper problem is simply to adjust the scope's vertical elevation knob to the center of its range and shoot a group at least 20 yards away. Make it a 10 shot group so you get a good idea if the scope is able to hold its zero. Because of the droop of the barrel, this group will be a lot lower than your aim point. That's okay, because all you want to know is if the scope can hold a zero setting. If the group is small and round, the problem you were having was due to a relaxed erector tube spring. If the group is larger, or if it's linear rather than round, the scope has problems other than just a relaxed erector tube spring. Adjusting the elevation downward to put tension on the erector tube spring doesn't fix anything. It simply helps you decide if the problem is in the scope alignment or if the scope is broken in some other way. You still have to correct the scope alignment if it needs to be raised in the rear. Once you know that your zero shift is being caused by a relaxed erector return spring instead of some other scope problem, you can fix it by either shimming the rear of the scope if the droop angle is small or by installing adjustable scope mounts if the angle is large. Having a quick way to diagnose the problem means that you can find it and fix it faster. Or you may determine that the scope is broken and needs to be replaced. Let's look at how you can adjust the scope to match the trajectory of a pellet for the best sight and range for your air gun. This is where we'll put what we've learned about scope mounting to practical use. Air guns are for short range shooting. 50 yards is a long shot for the average shooter. So, we want the scope to match the kind of shooting we'll be doing. When a pellet leaves the muzzle, it immediately starts drooping toward the ground. But, because it flies so fast, it also moves away from the shooter very quickly. That makes the trajectory, or flight path, of the pellet look like a downward curve. The farther it gets from the muzzle, the more it slows down and the downward curve becomes more pronounced. A scope looks straight out to infinity. When we sight in, we're making the straight line of the scope coincide with the downward curving line of the pellet. You might think that it's best to align the scope to the point in the trajectory where the pellet is farthest from the muzzle, but that's actually not how it's done. It's actually better to align the scope so that it intersects the pellet's trajectory two times, rather than one. If the scope is adjusted to intersect the trajectory at two points, it will remain in close alignment with the pellet for a range of distance. We can optimize the scope so the range is very close to where the pellet will strike for most air gun uses. That lets you hold the crosshairs right on target. And you can be assured of hitting very close to the aim point without having to make any adjustments. The first intersection of the trajectory should be 20 yards. With air guns that shoot 800 to 1000 feet per second, the trajectory will intersect the straight line of the scope a second time, around 28 to 35 yards from the muzzle. If the scope is set up this way, you'll be on target at distances from 18 to 40 yards from the muzzle, which is a very useful range. Setting the scope to intersect closer than 20 yards from the muzzle will dramatically shorten this range of optimum alignment. Setting the scope to intersect the trajectory 
Any farther than 20 yards will also shorten the optimum range. The best sight in distance is 20 yards because of the trajectory of a pellet that's moving between 800 and 1000 feet per second at the muzzle. Since most modern air guns fall within this range, you can forget about trial and error testing. But if your rifle shoots faster or slower than this range of velocities, you may have to adjust the first point of intersection by a few yards in either direction. Now, let's review what we've learned in this lesson. You can test if the erector spring is too relaxed by adjusting the elevation down to the halfway point and shooting a group. While the scope looks straight, a pellet's trajectory is always curved downward. For air rifles with muzzle velocities between 800 and 1000 feet per second, the scope should be sighted in to hit at 20 yards. Using this method of sight in, a scope will be close enough to hit the target between 18 and 40 yards without adjustment. Sighting in closer or farther than 20 yards shortens the distance over which the scope is on target. This lesson is a short one, but it's based on an understanding of how scopes work. If you sight in your scope at the distance I've shown you, you'll get the longest possible distance of usable range for an air gun shooting in the 800 to 1000 foot per second range. Thanks for watching Airgun Academy. Stay tuned for another great lesson from Pyramid Air.